say hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Djibouti Jams or Shibuchi Jams. I actually double checked, I think it actually is Djibouti. Uh, I'm Wilkie and I'm here with Zenron. Yo. And we're here to kick up the jams and actually talk about Djibouti. So, uh, I should mention right beginning at the first off, because you know, first episode happened and now here's the second one. If there's a chance that someone in the background starts doing stuff that I literally can't control, a lot of people don't know this about the way I'm set up for recording. I don't really have a room, I have a space. And then in that space, some dude can come in and turn on the TV, and then he will blast it the sound to 100 because he's dead. So it will always ruin recordings. Uh, if that happens, though, you might hear Donkey Kong Country music to help back to help <laughs> fight it off. So it's the only way I can really try and uh, stop it. So if you've ever wondered why a lot of my recent videos have uh, music always playing in the background, it's for that reason specifically. It's to drown out the other music playing. So. That's all I wanted to bring up. Sin, how you doing? Pretty good, man. Pretty good. A little annoyed that there's more One Piece shit, but yeah. You know. <laughs> well, good, because we're going to get to talk about more One Piece shit. But before we do that, I feel like we need to talk about um, what's going on in Taiwan. Because apparent, I think we said it last episode, the Taiwan Taiwanese version of this game has completely different characters and releases different yeah, characters. Yeah, so they... They release differently, and then, like, eventually both get them. Like, um, the thing is, once once we get ones that they had, they're totally different than the ones that they had because it's a gotcha, so you have to, like, you know, scale your releases based around when they're coming out. So, like, for example, the, the Obelisk Kaiba that's coming out, it's coming out in both, but theirs is totally different from ours because theirs is a limited gotcha unit, and ours is going to be free. So theirs is gonna be theirs is super good. I don't know what ours does, but theirs is crazy good. I mean that sounds really it's surprising to me to hear that uh ours is gonna be free. <laughs> You'd think that well, uh Well yeah. I guess they still classify I guess they still classify Kaiba as a villain, I don't know why. Because the Japanese version hates making villains gacha characters. There's not very many. Really? Huh. Interesting. Yeah, like the only I don't know enough about Fist of the North Star. I think Rayo might be a villain. I don't know. He just looks real mean. He does look um, mean. I don't, I don't know anything about Fist of the North Star, though. But other than that, I think the only limited villain I can think of... Uh, Muzan from Demon Slayer is one. Yeah. Uh, Majin Vegeta, I guess, if you count him. Oh, he's a villain, 100%. He murders the shit out of those people. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> um, it's still Vegeta, though, you know? Uh, Krolo is one. All right. Dio is one. It feels like a lot of the villains who I've gotten limited are just ones that are just so immensely popular that it's like... Pretty much, yeah. Y yeah, no, they're getting they're getting limited. Muzin, he is the bad guy for one of the most... Popping off out of nowhere, Shonen Jump properties out here. He's limited. He's going to be a banner unit. Yeah, meanwhile, a lot of other villains are like... Even really popular ones are like farmables. Like Akaza is a super popular Demon Slayer character. He's always farmable. All of his versions are farmable. Wow. And uh, the, 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 the fucking second... The Taguro, the elder Taguro, and then also the yep. third dude. The really tall, lanky man that I forget the name of. Really tall, lanky man. He's From super Yu lanky. Hakusho? Yeah, Yu Hakusho, the third villain, the third main villain. The one after Taguro. Yeah. Sensui. Yes, I always forget Sensui's name. Yeah, he is also farmable. Yeah, that's that's crazy. So at least it's cool that we're gonna be getting a Kaiba Obelisk. Kind of a shame that the the Taiwanese version is going to be much better than ours. Yeah, it sucks. Um, but I mean, it is what it is. I'd rather have him for free than have to worry about pulling him. I guess that that maybe that's not true. I don't know. I can't decide. But you know, it is what it is. Apparently, it's because I didn't know this, but apparently, the Taiwan version cannot use um, JoJo characters. Really, you know, because of copyright issues? I, I guess I don't know. I, that's just what I was told. I don't even know if that's right. But I trust the person that told it to me. They said that apparently the Taiwan version cannot use any JoJo characters, so they, they change everything up. So that way, when a JoJo character gets released, they don't have to be like, shit, shit, what do we do? They just completely change the schedule up. 
Wow. Like, they have some characters that have never even been announced for Japan yet. Like, they have, um, the, what is the, the jutsu in Naruto that brings dead people back to life? Edo Tensei? I was they about to say a, reincarnation no jutsu. I think that might be what it's in, like, English or something. But I think it's called Edo Tensei. And they have the Minato version of that, where he's got, like, the Kurama cloak. Oh, shit. Wow. That's super cool. Never been announced, yeah. Just the the only price I had to pay is never having the ability to get one of the best JoJo characters, Jonathan Joestar. That's insane. Yeah, I guess I, mean, I I would definitely much prefer Jonathan and any Joestar over more Naruto characters, but it is what it is. Yeah, that's true. Well, I've just felt like we needed to talk about we'll probably talk about Kaiba when our version comes out, but I just wanted to make it to mention like Yo, Kaiba with Obelisk. I saw that and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then I was like, oh, I have to wait. <laughs> Guess I'll have to just wait a little bit longer. But let's start talking about what's going on with the 17 million download because holy crap, this is the most I've ever seen someone put actually uh, any effort into an event because there's like a whole mystery shit going on. There's like... um. Do you know much about this, by the way? Because it's all in Japanese. I have the info right here, but... The content? No, I was just planning to read it on a CHD when, uh, when uh, it came out. All right, so basically there's a... Recently, there's been a number of incidents causing inhuman demons. Exorcists and heroes have taken fighting back as the threat is yet to subside. Our Junpuchi Island's host, Lil, believes that there's a hidden hand pulling the strings behind the scenes of these events. Therefore, in order to solve this case, Lil asks your Junpuchi heroes to help crack the case. Collaborate with Lil and collect clues to discover the identity of the mastermind behind it all. So it's actually like a mystery, and you have to collect clues and then... There's a part where you go into this specific menu and you're like, oh, yeah, now who's the murder or who's the, the mysterious person behind it all? And then you have to give them like uh, you have to say the name. And I don't know how that's going to work, because I'm pretty sure I can't put like Gecko Moria in English and it's going to know who I'm talking about. <laughs> so that's a problem, yeah. But still kind of cool. So you'll get like if you guess the answer right before, I think it's 810. Um, you receive a multi-ticket and a special stamp of the Mastermind at a later date. And three lucky players will win one million yen worth of rubies. And if you collect all the clues, you get a $17 million, $17 million, $17 million download choice ticket. So, that's pretty cool, but also, this is the part where none of us know any, both of us don't know any Japanese, so it's completely lost Yeah, on but us. usually, uh, for those that don't know, good hint, uh, you can go into the uh, Jumpuzi Discord, and usually if they have, if it's one of those things where, like, you can fill it out, and then it'll send you a link to, like, click on to get your prize, they'll just <laughs> post the link on the Discord, mm. so everyone can just go click it without having to do the puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> so we can let all the others do all the work and then we type in and say it was goku all along and we get our special prize exactly <laughs> uh that's pretty cool i like i like it when a gotcha is doing just something i would not expect obviously you've been playing a little bit more i don't know if they've been doing more stuff like this but as someone who's been like new to the game and i'm like there's so much stuff to do and then they're like here's this entire mystery thing and i'm like how the hell does anyone play this this is <laughs> this is insane the amount of things that you have to um kind of do but it's nice to hear like the community is so you know well built that they're like oh no we know how to handle this don't worry we'll guide you yeah it, it is appreciated because it's always hard in a, a japanese game right yeah it's yeah. uh problem it's very tough but so that's cool um now let's actually talk about the units that are coming out there's also a bunch of selected tickets like the selected ticket that you get for doing the special thing is completely different from like the other selected ticket where you get to select more five star units there's so much five star units in this game and all of them are in some way kind of viable that i always feel like completely at pause about what to actually pick so yeah that's fair <laughs> i'm like um, oh man 
I don't know what to do. That's a problem that I have in single player a lot. When I look at like units for it, I'm like, oh, that's a probably good because there's 400 million. Uh, I don't have that problem too much in PvP because I at least like know what I'm looking for. Mm-hmm. But in PvE, I'm literally like, oh god, there's so many things and I can't read any of them, and I I don't know the name of some of these characters because as much as I love Shonen Jump, you start throwing some of these dudes from like the 80s or the 70s at me, and I'm like, oh god. I don't yeah, what, I don't you know don't what know. man with baby on shoulder is. <laughs> you don't know who Tyson Mayet is. I know who that is because uh, he's from Rocky. I feel like you Blues. have the opposite problem. I feel like if you saw people like from currently releasing stuff or like more recent stuff, you'd be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, who but the if fuck they is drop this? some dude from the some the Japanese <laughs> exclusive, never localized manga from the sixties, you'd be like, "Oh yeah, no, oh, that's like- this guy." Holy shit, that's Ben from Ginja the Star. <laughs> that's from the Shining Star Gene. I love him. Who the fuck is Asta? I don't know who any of these characters are. I think I actually did a thing of like, this guy looks like a Black Clover guy. Can you tell me what he does? <laughs> Just no idea what any of them did. Um, oh but it's God. true. I really, It's really the difference between me and you is that you're really up to date with a lot of the current up the Shonen Jump stuff. And I like the old, very hard to track down uh, Shonen Jump stuff to read. The stuff that's actively like in crunchy notes, like terrible scan quality. Like vintage scans that have like horrible fan translations in them. Yeah, and then there's like shit talking at the end notes where it's like, yeah, that the translator Puffy Man, fuck him. We're not using him anymore. <laughs> like there's entire drama going on in the backseat of this at the time updating weekly. <laughs> and then they'll disappear for like a month and they're like, alright, no new chapter. And I'm like, okay. And then they'll come back and say, like, hey, we got the team back together. Someone lost a job somewhere, and so they can translate again. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, it's, they had to go and not do translation work for a while so fuck them but yeah it's it's kind of crazy but all right let's start breaking down some of these characters because it's a lot we're gonna save the piece of resistance for last which is the new limited character so get hype for him when we get to him but they uh they released sabuto from uh demon slayer i don't know how to pronounce a japanese name for demon slayer Kimitsu no Yaiba. Yaiba. Yep. Okay. I'll believe you on that one. Uh, makes sense because he fits with the yo- the kind of ghosty horror theme that they're going right now, which is... Be- if also you're- makes if- sense because they have to release a Demon Slayer character at least one every month, contractually obligated, apparently. It's true. And this guy they made really it want, into... They want that cash, man. They want it bad. And this dude who protects the guardian rock of all Demon Slayers... Which is how I remember this character is that he's the dude that protects the rock that <laughs> makes Tanjiro stronger. Um, he made it into the fighting game over all the demon dudes that were in that uh, <laughs> that are in Demon Slayer. So you know that they, he's extremely important to everything. He's hot commodity right now. He's got a cool mask and he's a ghost. What more do you want, Zen? Yeah, I mean, I actually like Sabito. I think he's pretty cool. Um... He is very cool. I, I, I think the, my only complaint with him is, like, does there really need to be a Demon Slayer character in every celebration? <laughs> but otherwise, um, I think it, it's very cool. They're going to run out of Demon Slayer characters eventually. There's always version 10s. You can always just keep making more. They're going to start releasing the high school variants? Is that what I'm hearing? Eventually, I bet they will. You say that as a joke, but I feel <laughs> like they might actually. What if the next? Um, what What is the like the LR equivalent in uh, Jibuchi again? What is it called? Uh, Muso. What if the next Muso was a uh, high school fucking Nezuko? That was just <laughs> in stark contrast to the other two, which is like the first Hokage, Super Vegito, yeah. <laughs> and Shirama and Super Vegito. <laughs> in high school does not go I would like that I would I'm, probably I, not oh summon my God, for dude, it I would die I, would, I really need the next Muso to just be something absolutely terrible like that like it's just uh, it's just Inosuke but when he dislocates his arms so he gets whippy arms <laughs> now baby Inosuke 
<laughs> That's the <laughs> off the cliff. Baby, they get thrown off the cliff, you know. <laughs> And that's his special animation is that he just, a cliff shows up and he gets tossed at the enemy. Tossed off the cliff and he lands on the enemy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I would love it so much. Okay, you're right. I There's... We opened this podcast with baby tossing. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way it goes, man. Toss that baby. That I would, first of all, I, I don't know if I would ever 100% wail, but if they... That, please, and put that on Twitter of Wilkie just screaming, toss that baby. <laughs> okay, fine. And I'll promote it and say, watch Jabuchi Jams. That's the only promotion <laughs> I'm ever going to do for this series. You should totally watch it because it's just me and Zed fucking around talking about show to jump characters. Uh, but I'm glad he's free. I really do think he's cool. As much as they constantly release Demon Slayers going back to Sabato. Uh, yeah, it is nice that they, they, they've they been making him free kind of consistently, which is nice. I don't know if they're not trying to, like, get that you. cash or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Like, just... uh, Sabato's free, and then we just that Tanjiro we just got is also free. The the one with the mask on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that's a good bit of maybe foreshadowing. <laughs> I don't know if they did that on purpose, but it's like, oh, hey. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess that's true. Nice fit. Uh, let's see who we got here next. All right, well, this is the next one that showed up on OCHD, so I'm going to talk about By the way, you should support OCHD at all points. That's the only way that me and Zen are yes, able to talk about this. Please. They have an um, amazing website. It covers everything. It's got characters. It's got links like the Legend Summons. It's got all the event information, all the gacha information. It has literally everything. And they also have a Ko-Fi page. Kofi, what do you call it? Yeah, Kofi. Coffee. Coffee. Kofi. Yeah, they have one where you can just tip them any amount of money that you want. Um, you should totally do that if you're feeling generous one day. Yeah, yeah. So if you're enjoying this, stop what you're doing. Go support OCHD in whichever way possible. Uh, so, yeah, let's talk about Gekamoria, who is from One Piece, because this Celebrations Limited is actually a One Piece character, and this is the Nightmare Luffy, and this is the duty fights Gekko Moria. And I think it looks like we're going to have a fight with him, and it looks like he's in his... I forget what it's called, his, like, mastered evolution, big fat guy mode, where he's <laughs> got a whole bunch of souls in him. <laughs> he's the opposite of, uh... Majin Buu. Of Buu. When he yeah. becomes mastered, he gets... <laughs> <laughs> he gets fatter. He gets fatter instead of skinnier. Yeah. But the version we have is regular old Gekko Moria, it looks like. Uh, you don't know a lot about Thriller Bark. Actually, I'm going to assume you've heard the reputation of Thriller Bark, at least. I've heard that it fucking sucks. Yeah, a lot of people don't like it, but let me tell you this right now. I like Thriller Bark. All those people just have inflated egos about what they think deserves to be a good One Piece, and they're like, oh, man, if this is a 100% uh, Kino, Raw, whatever the fuck, it's not valid... <laughs> But I'm here to tell you right now, Thriller Bark isn't that bad. It's perfectly good. It has a lot of fun yeah, characters. Yeah, uh, isn't it like a Halloween arc? Yeah, it's a Halloween arc. So there's a lot of good like, uh, oh. there's a, like a zombie bit where one of the zombies is coming out from the grave, and then Usopp goes to push him back down. <laughs> oh, that's what that game is from. Yeah, that's from Luffy that pushes him back down. Oh, my bad, it's Luffy, but it's a really funny bit where he's just like <laughs> slowly goes over and puts him. He's like, "Stop that!" Uh, I think you would like. Uh, maybe it is because I'm such a big horror fan, so for them to have like a horror themed um, arc is just really good for me. This is also where Perona comes from, which is the ghost girl whose main uh, ability is give, hitting you with ghosts that causes you to get depressed. And uh, Usopp is immune to it because he's always depressed. So <laughs> he's like the perfect counter. That's amazing. <laughs> yep. Like I said, it's very fun. It's like a not supposed to be taken too serious arc. There's an invisible man fight at one point. It's very good. I really like it, but a lot of people don't. So that's probably why a lot of people are like, not only is it another One Piece kind of themed event... But it's also the one of the arc that not a lot of people care for. And I'll say some of it probably comes down to Gekko Moria because as much as I kind of like his ability, he kind of looks like a goober. There's no denying looking at him that he does not look threatening in any way, shape, or form. Yeah, Even he in, looks kind of like a goof. 
like a, I'm looking at his unit and he just looks like a little goof. Yeah, he's a little goof. And then some stuff comes back later. He's, his ability is very good, which is like taking people's shadows and then he can put them into basically like other things. And then they basically become that thing. They become like a version of that person. So he can put them into like a zombie body or something. Again, I think it's pretty cool, but it's also not for everyone. And this character specifically is, even as much as I like Thriller Bark, Gekomori is not really one of the main reasons for it. But I think he's free, right? Because he's a villain, so you can just get him yep. from this fight. He's a, he's a catastrophe class, so he's going to be the one that's got the, uh, what do you call it? The 160 like special costume? Yes. Like yeah, a super yeah. hard fight that has the costume? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, which I have not been able to get one of those at all. They're just too tough for me right now. <laughs> I tried, but yeah, those are you have to have some really specific stuff for all of those. Like generally, uh, they have like a specific mechanic that the limited that comes out with them counters. But usually, there are other characters that will be able to do it too. So it's not like you need to pull the limited to do it. But generally, if you don't know what the mechanic is, looking at what the limited uh, like nullifies is a good way to figure out what you probably need to worry mm -hmm. about. Yeah, yeah, sure, that makes sense. Uh, next is another one who's going to be a free. It is Pinky, a.k.a. Mina, from uh, My Hero. I assume that My Hero is in a similar situation to Demon Slayer, where there's at least one release every month or so. Or is it not like that? Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's exactly like that, but it's close. Slightly l less slowdown, then. Let's say like, every other month or so. Probably. For All just right. Demon Slayer? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying for my hero at this point. Oh, oh, I thought you said... For some reason, I was positive you said Demon Slayer. For my hero, it's actually been kind of slow for a while. Hmm. Um, and now <laughs> we're kind of getting... It's weird that we're getting these ones that we're getting now. Um, because we're getting like a My Hero event pretty soon. Mm -hmm. That it's probably going to have like a, our fourth Deku and then like some other stuff in it. So it's weird that, I mean, Tokoyami, I guess, makes sense, because he's, like, darkness and shadow and shit. But, like, why Mina? Just because she's an alien lady? I, I guess assume it's that joke where she wanted to be called <laughs> Alien Queen, and they showed her, I guess like, so. looking like the alien from... They should have actually gotten that version of Mina, the Alien Queen version <laughs> that was, like, you know, into her. <laughs> I would have loved it. I actually really like Mina, even though I don't think she does much anymore in the manga because the manga's gone into some strange places uh but i really like her i really yeah. like her son and i really like that she's free so that's all cool for me yeah the one thing that i like is that there's a lot of the uh, of fun freebie units and events like these i wish tokoyami was but he's actually really good so um, uh, yeah we'll, we'll get to him know. as we go down here he's too good to be free yeah Ah, oh, that's that's the shame of it, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Suffering he, from success. I saw that kit, and I was like, I know he ain't free, and I was right. <laughs> and this one's actually kind of surprising. I think this is rounding out with the last of the free units. It's the Millennium Earl from D. Gray Man. And I'm actually kind of surprised that there's any D. Gray Man anything. Because I'm. There's, I thought... there's actually a surprising amount of D. Gray Man. I mean, there's still not a lot. Mm -hmm. But by. By the standards of other stuff, there's a decent amount of D. Gray Man stuff. Really? Because I always one, thought two, that there were... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... 11 D. Gray Man units, if you count Millennium Earl. Wow. That's more than I would think, because I thought that... Isn't D. Gray Man one of those... One of the many Shonen Jump things where it's like, oh man, something bad happened in the back scene, and now we're not even sure if D. Gray Man's ever going to finish? It's like one it's of those. I don't know cases. anything about the Gray Man. So I just know that at some point, like they're borderline, like they're in Hunter X Hunter territory, where it's like we don't know if this story is no, ever going to finish. One chapter every month. I think yeah, if you're lucky, month, I don't think they have year, updated I mean. in years. <laughs> I think that's they're. Painful. I think that's the way it's going. But let me actually double check that real quick. Let me see. Yeah, it's been going to the present, and I don't think it's really gotten many chapters or something i remember because i think aminol was talking about it uh and he was always always under the impression that he was a suffering d gray man fan he's like yeah this just doesn't have the same level of release schedule that you would expect and it's a real shame because it's very good 
Yeah, but. people have been telling me to read D. Gray Man like constantly, so I might have to do that. It looks cool. And this dude looks cool. He looks like <laughs> what Gekko Mario should kind of look like, where he looks very silly, and then there's something extremely off-putting about him just looking at him. Just the giant smile, the flowers in the hair. Very simple design, but, you know. I, I, is, I mean, is he a bad guy? I'm guessing yes. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you don't get to call an Earl of something without being a bad guy. You know what? That's fair. And you, he's got a creepy top hat, which is also uh, very important on the villain side of things. Yeah, yeah. The bigger the top hat, the more of a villain you are. That's why Doug Dimmodome is like the real villain of the Fairly Odd Parents because he's an industrialist. <laughs> <laughs> In capitalism. Yeah, I'm going <laughs> to paint another podcast that I'm on with anti capitalist rhetoric. <laughs> uh. Trust me. I we were we've been doing that for a while. Go back to old <laughs> modcast to be released. We were always anti, but yeah, that looks we like the last been fierce podcast leftist. Exactly. Fuck. What was that one? Now we're just gonna start quoting something from the other podcast where we were like, "No, it was the 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 fucking the wall to keep GT out." <laughs> Do you remember this? It was no. during. It was when uh, I think tr tr Trump was unfortunately elected, and we said that the GT units were coming to Dokkan, like for the first time. And I think we said we need to build a wall to keep the GT units out. It's from an old modcast. It ah. very different times, but uh, amazing. We were really funny back then. <laughs> Yeah, what happened to us? <laughs> uh, speaking of really funny, next is the actual limited gotcha. What after what what better to follow up a limited One Piece character with another limited One Piece character? Uh, okay. Nightmare. Luffy. I'm just I'm completely guessing based on nothing, mm -hmm. but this is a lame as fuck choice, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. I really like Thriller Bark. Nightmare Luffy is not one of the reasons I like Thriller Bark. <laughs> so many people were like, what the fuck is this? This is, <laughs> uh, yeah. This is not someone you, out of all the One Piece characters, out of all the Luffy forms to make a limited, Nightmare Luffy is not one of them. It would be like making, ah, uh, fuck. What is like something that would be extremely lame to make a limited four for like a main character like i guess false super saiyan goku oh Maybe. god the lord slug yeah i've heard that people are like it's not even a real like form it's just like a no. silly thing that he does in like so, one thing yes so the way that they beat gecko moria is that luffy this is again from what I remember because this was the one, the like something that was like, okay, I guess this kind of happens. Luffy, kind of like the spirit bomb, takes in a hundred spirits of people that Gecko Moria has kind of has laying around, and he basically absorbs a hundred people, and he becomes Nightmare Luffy because he's filled with the souls of a hundred people. So that's why he's all big, cause and he's also that's also why he's a fucking swordsman now. By the way, is because he has the the soul of a swordsman inside of him. So this is the only time Luffy ever uses a sword. It's really weird and complicated. And I remember when it happened, it didn't really make much sense. <laughs> but it was basically a way for Luffy to very quickly get very strong to punch uh, Gecko Moria and win. And then even then, I think the fight is not over. So. Very weird character choice. Just, like, if it was a character that was releasing for free, oh, great. Nightmare Luffy, yeah, sure. It's like the, it's like the Tanjiro thing, where it's like, oh, yeah, this character. Like, imagine if they had made that Tanjiro <laughs> that is with training with the big rock, if that was a limited character. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it just it doesn't really fit. And this is someone who's a big fan of One Piece, big fan of Luffy and his dumbass self. It just doesn't fit. And it doesn't really make sense, especially if you're following up fucking Zoro. If anything, they should have gone. Yeah, I was thinking, like, why wouldn't it just be Wano Luffy? 
I think one of, like, uh, Luffy Toro is already in the game, and I don't think they want to do, like, the fucking swole version of Luffy Toro, which is currently fighting Kaido. They want to wait a little bit, maybe. Um, but yeah, in the game, too. Yeah, the, the, he's already... In, that's the thing. When I was like, how come Luffy Toro wasn't? I actually went to go look up. He's already in the game. It's just the the first but, version like, of You him. could make a limited... Yeah, you could easily make a limited version of the Wano Luffy, like... Yeah, I don't know. I guess I just don't get why of any version of Luffy you decide to go with, you make like the, this Frankenstein's monster one yeah. as a limited. It's a very weird choice. But if it was going to be any like to be honest, if there was anyone from Thriller Bark that kind of deserved to be a limited, it's the Zoro from this, which is from the way at the end. It's when uh, a man called Kuma shows up and basically Luffy's super fucking suffering and uh, Zoro says, like, I want to help out Luffy because it looks like he's going to die if he keeps this up. And he's like, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take all of Luffy's suffering, and what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to shoot it inside of you, and you're just going to have to tank it. And it's going to hurt way that. worse. And yeah, that that's uh, the famous scene where he's, like, just fucking standing there, and he's, like, taking all of it, and he's given, like, no reaction, but he's fucking bleeding everywhere. That's the character I would say would be worthy of a limited, because that's literally the one thing people will always say they like about Thriller Bark, is that scene with Zoro. It's the scene where yeah, he's standing I've seen there. Yeah, that. That's fucking, like, that was cool. Zoro's, okay. I don't, I, I'm not going to say I don't like One Piece, because that's mean, because I yeah. just don't really, like, know enough about One Piece, and I'm not invested with- enough to... Right, yeah. Um, Because there's stuff about it I did like that I thought was cool. Um, But Zoro is, like, the coolest anime character ever. He's so fucking cool. Everything he does is so fucking raw. He is. I remember I didn't read that far into it, but, like, I was in Arlong Park. I'm I'm in, like, Alabasta was where Mm -hmm. I stopped. But, like, in Arlong Park where they're, like, Where's Zoro anyway? And then it cuts to Zoro, and he's just like sitting on the chair, having beaten the shit out of a bunch of goons. <laughs> and he's just like, I am also here, being cool as fuck. Yeah. He is the character that is very. So here's the thing is that even as the one thing that is annoying about Zoro is that there's a lot of char- there's a lot of people who are like uh misunderstanding Zoro's character so like I think the most obvious one was like when uh there's a part in One Piece where Sanji leaves the crew for a bit and everyone was like fucking I can't wait for Zoro to go up to Sanji and beat the shit out of him how dare he leave the crew and then when they made up again they're like oh hey Sanji it was like nothing (laughs) there was nothing there because it was like (laughs) you already got shit figured out with the captain we're cool I still hate you but it's not for that reason (laughs) Oh, I remember that. Twitter was, like, blowing up. Like, if Zoro doesn't fuck Sanji up for this, then what's the point? And I was like, what the fuck? It's, yeah, it's really weird. It's all, like, a misunderstanding of the scene where he says, like, where they want to stop um, Usopp from fighting Luffy. And they're like, he's like, no, you have to let this happen because he's being a man and he's making his decision. You have to respect uh, Usopp's decision, even if it's a stupid one, because that's what a man does. <laughs> But it's a misunderstanding yeah. of like him being like super aggro for the team itself. It's like no, it's you're not understanding the character fully. You're there's like things to this character that you're like taking at face value that there's like stuff underneath it and stuff like. So that's the only annoying thing I find about Zoro. But other than that, he always does cool shit. Like <laughs> you can always count on him to do some cool shit. Yeah, he's just like he exists purely to be raw as fuck, and I'm here for it. Yeah, I'm here. I'm 100 percent here for it. Yeah. So if, if if I was if there was ever going to be a limited unit from this arc, I would like it to be that Zoro. But instead, they went with fucking Frankenstein, Luffy instead. Well, it, well, it makes sense not to be Zoro two times like back to back. Yeah. But and but I'm also glad this... Zoro finally got a limited because this is his first one. Really? Oh yeah, that's mm, mm-hmm. it's weird because he is super popular. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know he is. It's super strange to me that he's not, like... He doesn't even have that many units. He's got three. I mean, I guess three for a non-main character is a decent amount, but mm-hmm. still. Yeah. And also, this Nightmare Luffy is also apparently pretty good. Like, what does he do that's actually pretty solid? He's good, yeah, which pisses me off because I want him and it, it makes me mad. Um, so his main thing... Let me pull the page back up so I don't read it wrong. I know what he does, but I don't trust myself to use the terminology correctly without uh, 
a reference material here. No, it's fair enough, fair enough. While I'm looking it up, his main thing that that uh, makes me like him a lot is that his uh, pass, like his buddy skill. Do you know about the copy buddy skills yet? Have you seen anyone with those yet? I don't think I've seen it. They're copy. all limited, so probably not. Um, no, maybe I thought there's one. There's one but for each color, seen. except for green. Nightmare Luffy is the green one. Uh, and what they do is they will use the buddy skill of whatever unit they're equipped to. So it's really good for units that like have really good buddy skills, but also are good on point, right? Oh, um, yeah. So it'll yeah, it'll copy the buddy skill of whoever they're equipped to, and then it will also buff the damage of any um, ultimate orbs that are on the board, like special move orbs. Uh-huh. It'll buff them all by I think it's like thirteen percent or something. They're they're all it's they're they're super good. Um, the blue one is Krolo, the red one is Itachi. The yellow one is Kenshiro, and now we have the green one, which is Nightmare Luffy. Uh, which, I love those skills. I always use them when I can. Uh, but he's good in general. Like his ultimate at max is a 518%, which is very high. Um, it goes up to 538 if he's fighting a DPS character, which is also really high. Um, when you ult with him, the next turn, he'll generate a random ult bubble on the board it's only a 10 percent damage one but it's still there mm. um and then when he ults he also gets a two turn 22 percent attack bonus <laughs> jesus yeah he's got a lot and then his passive um he cuts bleeding damage which is kind of useless for like pvp but I- i'm assuming that means that his boss guy whatever that weird vampire D- fatty D- is Gamora. um <laughs> is gonna yeah he's gonna make you bleed uh, and then his passive is just a flat 20% ultimate damage buff. So after he ults once, he's got 22% up to his attack, and then the flat 20% to his ult from his passive. And then during the first five turns, um, he'll convert blue and heart bubbles to rainbow bubbles. Only two of them, not all of them. So two blue and two heart bubbles to rainbow, which is, is awesome. Mm. He's really good. That's really solid. That, it's a shame it, he's that it's... better than he has any right to be, given that he's Frankenstein Luffy. <laughs> This is our the design ethos that we had for Baby in a, in a skate, but made into an actual unit. Where it's like, what if this very silly character was actually extremely good? Wouldn't that be funny? And then they did it, and it's like, oh, guys, if we were joking. Yeah, I, I'm I'm annoyed at how good he is. I'm just gonna say that. Yeah, <laughs> I wish that he sucked so I could not pull. And, you know, because I, I, I really wanted Zoro because I just like Zoro. He's cool as fuck. Mm-hmm. Um, but, man, he's not bad. I actually think he's good. Um, but, I don't know. The, this Luffy is, like, super fucking good. And he's, like, exactly what I want for PvP because I use a lot of greens in it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, why couldn't you just give Zoro this kid? Yeah, would have been nice, huh? Well... It's the way it goes. Unfortunately, also in one in One Piece, is Luffy's always stronger than Zoro. So if anything, they're just fitting with the narrative of One Piece. <laughs> How it has to be, yeah. Is feeling a thing. So yeah, that's Nightmare Luffy. He's really good. So if you're someone who super cares for extremely good characters, he's there for you for that. If you're someone who's a huge fan of Nightmare Luffy and you're still listening after we've shit on him completely, oh. uh, <laughs> you're a real one. And I hope you get this dude. All the best to you. Um, the the one guy who's like, oh shit, my favorite Luffy, <laughs> who's also <laughs> like oh. Frankenstein Luffy, <laughs> who's also like, oh shit, Wookie and Zed back at it again, my favorite duo. What could the, what are they gonna say about my favorite character? <laughs> just in <laughs> just in tears, <laughs> crying that out that his one life. guy's life. And then the he only hears one the guy sh- in the whole world with that exact combination of interests. <laughs> And then at the end, when he hears us say, like, do you do you? He wipes the tear and says, that's all I ever wanted to hear. I, I hope will. I get him. I will do. I will do me, man. I will Thank do me, you. man. A shout out to you, man. Always rep your favorite character. It doesn't matter how dumb you are. I have wrestlers who fucking suck that I love to the ends of the earth. So I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like listening to Lip Biscuits Roland, who is basically the equivalent to Nightmare Luffy. <laughs> The real life version of Nightmare Luffy. <laughs> yes, the real life version of Nightmare Luffy is fucking mid two thousands Limp Bizkit. <laughs> it's the album Chocolate Starfish. 
So there you go. <laughs> There's Nightmare Luffy. Let's go on to <laughs> some other game. Not many more characters to go through. Uh, next we got from the Grey Man again, Lena Lee, Lee, Lot of Lees, who is a... These are all banner units, by the way, but not with the limited, right? Pick up units? No, so the way banners work in this is there's usually like... There's the limited banner that all, that has just like the regular pool and plus the one limited that's on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the way that standard gotcha units work is there usually will be a banner that has like mul- multiple in them. So, well, okay, I guess there's two ways that they work, technically. There's either a banner that has usually like two, and it'll be five pulls guarantees you one of the two. Mm-hmm. So you could just pull it regularly, but every every fifth pull guarantees you one of the two on it. Or um, it's a banner series that's called like Side A, B, and C, which I think is what they did for Used to Kid, Captain B, or whatever the hell, and X Drake. Mm-hmm. Beige, beige, whatever that is. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Respect, beige. The, sorry. respect the Vin Diesel of One Piece. Sorry. Um, where it's a banner that has all three of them on it, but there's three different ones. And each one guarantees a different one of the three. So like Side A would be you know, Tokuyami, and and then side B would be whoever else, and side C would be whoever else. Usually, I think, though, those are first where it's all from the same series. So I don't think they're going to do that in this, because the banner units are all from different series. I think Mm -hmm. it'll probably be the other way around. Um, But, yeah, it could be either one of those. Alright. So, for Thunder, which the entire time I've been calling yellow units light, because I thought they were light, but now Thunder makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah, got, green is Earth. Yeah, Lena Lee from D. Gray Man. Uh, and you got any thoughts about her specifically? Other than my, here's my thoughts: she looks like a very nice girl. That's how very I jump. Sweet jumped. lady. Yeah. Um, hang on, I gotta. I for some reason my dumbass clicked off of the list of new units after I talked about. <laughs> I really, yeah, I got it. You're like, ah, we're done, done here. Got the characters. That are, yeah, the the only one. <laughs> All right, let's. So, uh, yeah, probably should have actually Lena said Lee. For God's sake, her name is Lena Lee Lee. Lena Lee Lee! <laughs> uh-huh. The sound that Patrick makes while the fuck is. <laughs> yeah, Lena Lee Hearing the Flying Dutchman shit. Lena Lee Lee. God uh, damn it, I'm so sorry, D. Great Man Fix, if you're still watching. <laughs> I apologize. All right, how, how is She's uh, pretty, pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, her ultimate, the thing with her it, that makes her not good for PvP is that her ultimate is based on recovery stat, not attack stat. Um, so really and it's re- really hard to buff recovery. Like, a, a shit zillion units buff attack, and very few buff recovery. Mm-hmm. So even though her recovery is sky high, it's like 2600, um, I think that's more attack than a lot of units have, uh, but it's hard, a lot harder to buff it. So you can't get it to, like, the crazy high numbers. Um, her passive is pretty cool. It converts the skill, like any random bubble on the board, to a skill bubble. So you're never going to be in a position where you use it and it doesn't go off because of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and it makes five red bubbles and four blocked bubbles into yellow, which is good. Anything that gets rid of blocked bubbles is pretty good. And then for one turn, uh, it cuts damage to yellow members by 800, but in the tower, it cuts it by almost 50,000, which is pretty cool. Um, and then her passive is just converts a block bubble to a yellow bubble and boosts recovery by 28%. So, I mean, she's going to have crazy high recovery. Um, I think she's pretty cool. I, I wouldn't pull for her, but I also wouldn't be mad if I got her, basically. Yeah, one of those units that later down the line, if you get, you're like, oh, cool. Yeah, like you, you pick her up and you're like, oh, cool, nice, you know? Huh. All right. But not one that I would chase. I think that's fair enough. Unless you're a big fan of degree degree man here. Yeah, if you are, by all means, go for it. I'm not like advising you not to pull for, especially if you like degree man. I'm just saying yeah. that I personally will probably not. Yeah. Uh, and next we got Fumikage Tokoyami, who is the AKA I like him. the Birdman. Yeah, bird 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 face. Yeah, uh, good old. I Birdo. like him. I think he's cool. I don't think he's like incredible. Um. His ultimate is pretty neat. It's 455%, which is a little on the low side, but it uh, totally ignores damage reduction, so that's nice. Um, And then it does a fixed 19,000 afterward to everybody, right? So uh, he attacks one enemy, 
for the the four fifty five percent, and then after that, every enemy takes nineteen thousand. So kind of neat. Uh, his buddy skill is that he'll convert three heart and a red bubble to green bubbles, and then for three turns, he's going to give the buddy that he's a unit like or that he's equipped to forty nine percent ultimate damage, and then also if they're green. Uh, all green team members get 18%. So, like, he'll buff the guy that he's equipped to, and then if he's on, like, a mono green team, he'll also give 18% to everybody. Mm. So I think that passive is really good. I think it's strong. Um, and then his his personal passive is reduces bleed damage and boosts attack by 18%. So he kind of seems like the, oh, you didn't get Nightmare Luffy? Maybe you got him, because he also... So counters it because he also reduces bleed damage, mm, uh, yeah. and he's also the right color. He's the because he's green. Yeah, uh, but I really like him. I might try to get him. It depends on the kind of banner he's on because I really hate the ones where it's like, oh, Random pull three. a million times on this and hope you get, <laughs> hope you get the right guaranteed unit. You know, I hate when the yeah. guaranteed drop is not confirmed. Um, but if he is a guaranteed, like a confirmed guarantee for like five multis or whatever, I'll probably get him. Hmm. And then also, I also not just sh- like him because he's a bird man that shoots that fucking yeah. shadow that looks like a bird. I assume his win pose, which is the one that they debuted him with, is him, his little shadow buddy, showing up and giving the thumbs up. Yeah, I know. His victory pose is so good. It's uh, just dark shadow. Like, it's him standing there, not really doing anything, but it's dark shadow being like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this dude so much. I actually would really, maybe depending on the banner, I might go for him, but I really like Fumikage. He's like one of those characters where, from My Hero where it's like, it's similar to Mina where I'm like, oh man, I really like them. And then they kind of just disappear. But at least Fumikage has a little bit more because he has like some stuff with uh, Hawks. And I assume eventually they'll do something because his Dark Shadow seems extremely strong under certain con- conditions, but you never know with manga how they're going to treat side characters. You can go... Yeah, exactly. You never know you're going to wake up one day and pull the Naruto and all of a sudden uh, this character that a lot of people liked is dead because <laughs> reasons. Meiji turned a corner and just... <laughs> uh, right through the stomach. Boom. And that's it. That's all she wrote. And then finally for the last one, this is a... Funny enough, I had actually been debating reading this manga because it is totally one of mine, where it's Nuro Rise of the Yokai Clan is from... It's like a 90s manga. It's the one from the teacher with like the weird demon claw hand. Alright, you ready for me to blow your fucking mind? Go ahead. I have read this. What the fuck? Not all the way through. Not all the way through. Alright. But I have read this. Is it good? <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. I, I don't actually remember why I stopped, but I, I did end up stopping, but I, mm. I liked it when I was reading it, so I don't actually know why I stopped. It looks really cool, and that dude always shows up in a lot of, like, Shonen Jump fighters, except for Jump Force, because no one was allowed to be in there, unless you were, like, Dragon Ball, Hunter x Hunter, or one of the other popular ones. Pretty much, uh, yeah. So, how how does it was Surara? Okawa? Surara Oikawa. Yeah, All Surara right. Oikawa. I like her. Um, she's a, a, one of those niche ones that's like, I counter a very specific thing. Uh, but the stuff that she counters is all pretty good. Uh, she does 450 damage, which is not that high. But not 450, but 450% is what I mean when I say that. Um, which is not that high, but she also does uh, freeze, which is cool. Um and then she adds 100% to herself if the enemy has a barrier up. So that means if the enemy has a barrier, she goes up to 550, which is a lot. Uh, and then she also freezes, which starts at 17,000. And then for two turns, or well, it's a two turn freeze. So it does 17,000 for turn one and then 27,000 for turn two. So that's an additional, what, 40, 50, some, 40 something thousand, mm-hmm. uh, which isn't too bad. And then her support is four yellow bubbles and two hearts go rainbow. And then for three turns, she also inflicts freeze if you use her as a buddy. Um, So she's all about freeze, basically. The Mm -hmm. freeze on her as a buddy skill is not as strong, but it lasts a turn longer. So it syncs up with stuff like uh, Toshiro and PvP, like that second slot. If you want to inflict a buff, it'll go all the way through to the end. Mm -hmm. Um, Her buddy is basically a free-to-play version of uh, Princess Shirahoshi's. 
Mm. Or not a free to play, but a, but a non limited version because she has a banner unit. But yeah, yeah, like a non limited version of Shira Hoshi's. And then her passive is uh, she takes weakening for two less turns than most people do, which is good. Like if you get hit with three turns of weakening, for example, she'll only have one. And then when her HP is below 80%, her attack goes up by 23%. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, not sounds pretty good to me. A lot of these newer units seems to be seem to always be built pretty good and usable in certain things, which is one of the best things I think about <laughs> Jibuchi. Is that no matter what, uh, if they're one of the more newer units, they're extremely usable as long as you find the right thing for them. And even if you want to use them, yeah. even if you want to try and using them in PvP, you kind of have to think a little bit more about it. Like obviously, some characters are more built for it, but that doesn't mean that's not that doesn't mean it can stop you from trying them out in PvP if they're not their main specialty is not PvP is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. yeah, like you could probably do some cool stuff with her on like a freeze team in PvP because like her ultimate does freeze and then her buddy skill also does it. So if you put Crollo on her, you could do like her ultimate for a stack of freeze. Then use Crollo, who will m mimic her buddy skill for another stack of freeze. And then you can use Princess Shirahoshi buddy skill for another stack of freeze. <laughs> so you can put three freezes on in one turn. Pretty nice. <laughs> pretty it's nice. Pretty cool, yeah. I mean, it's, it's gimmicky and probably wouldn't be that good. But at the same time, it's just fun to do like silly shit like that. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to experiment and do silly things. And if a gotcha lets you do that, then you know that you're doing something right. That's why I will always say that peak Dokkan is when you were allowed to use Ninja Murasaki on a team and he didn't and he actually contributed as opposed to just being a liability. Once they took away that ability, team building was basically dead. And I'll die on that grave. But, yeah, yeah, well, okay, Ninja Murasaki was special though. That was a very unique time. <laughs> <laughs> a very unique unit for a very special time <laughs> in everyone's lives. That's who we need. That's the next limited from Dragon Ball. <laughs> Ninja Murasaki. <laughs> Give me that. Give me that this instant. Oh god, he can fuck they can have the his windscreen is all five of the Ninja Murasaki showing up <laughs> doing the windscreen. <laughs> I, I need that it. so bad. So much. Uh before so that's all the new units coming. I hope uh you find one of them you like, and thank you very much for going this far. But I did want to bring up one other thing and before we end, because there is a 17 million uh, download guaranteed 5 gotcha, but it's not out right now. It's coming up pretty soon. Uh, it just sounded pretty crazy to me, so this is why I'm mentioning it, and it's actually kind of weird that they haven't brought it up, but because of how good it is, I'm going to assume they want other people to summon on the other stuff <laughs> before they release this. But it, they the do gotcha... That. They do yeah. that all the time. This gacha will be available for a limited time only. Get a five-star uh, five character guaranteed every multi. Additionally, on the third multi, get a 2021 unit guaranteed. You can only summon on this gacha five times total. So on the first multi, it's 500 rupees, guaranteed five unit. The second multi, 750 rupees, guaranteed 2020 unit or five or, or later five unit. And then third multi, and from this point on, they're all 1,000, but it's a guaranteed 2021 and then fourth multi is a guaranteed 2020 or later five unit times two. And then the fifth multi is guaranteed 2020 or later five star unit times three. And then this gotcha does not reset. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, wow. yeah. I think that's the second time they've done that because I think they did one earlier too. Mm. Um, but any 2021 guaranteed banner is awesome. Because yeah. I mean, a lot of the shit that's come out this year has been really good. Um, also, don't forget the tweet. If you go to, I think OCHD retweeted it, but if you just go to the Jump to, Jump uh, Jumpucci mm -hmm. uh, Heroes page, they have a link that you can click, like, do it from your phone, click the link, and it'll load you into the game, and it'll give you a select ticket. And there's a lot of good units in the select ticket. It, it's They're not limited, but they're still good stuff. Like, you can get... Um, yeah, I think I have the list right I here. I think the Namek Vegeta, you can get a bunch of stuff. I, I don't know that many of them, if I'm being completely honest. But, like, uh, yeah. you can get the... The, five, the three kings arc use k you can get um yeah i, I got Bankai, the list i will bring ichigo i got it right here it's uh nira okay. from death note haya osawashi from kochikawa 
Gojiro Hyuga from Captain Tsubasa, Tyson Maeda, Power of Love from Rakuten Enchi Blues, Fifth Illusion Style, Yu Kanata from D. Grayman, Torpedo Girl from Bobo Bo 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 Bo, Atushi Morisakohara from Kuriko no I almost had that one, from Kuriko no Abasuka, Momo Bele Develuk from To Love Ru, Sylvia Zalduk from uh, Hunter x Hunter, Tsunade from Naruto, Leona Abuachio from Golden Wing, I completely fucked up that name, uh, Smoking Bombs Revival Hayata Gokudura yeah. from uh, Hitman Reborn, Bushisawa K- Kotaku from Bushisawa Receive. I Great would need D- a different list than you. There's two lists. So this is for the, uh, oh no, this is from the 17 million download choice ticket. That's from the one you get from solving the mystery. So that's my bad. Boruto, oh, I'm talking about the one from the tweet. Yeah the, yeah, the one from the mystery is better. But for the one from the tweet is still pretty good. Uh, right, there's some I'll, decent stuff on there. I'll, I'll go for that one after I finish this because I'm too deep into this okay. list of stuff. All right, all right. I was looking at it, I was like, I'm not seeing any of these names on my fucking list. Great, great <laughs> Demon Lord Vern from Dragon Quest Dies Great Adventure. Hagoramo Gitsune from Nura Rise of the Yokai Clan. Tokiko Sumaro from Bosu Rankin. And Boruto Uzumaki from Boruto Naruto Next Generations. And then the other ticket, I believe, is up here. Do you actually have the list for those units now that you're looking at it? Yeah, do you want me to read it? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it is uh, Genius Saiyan Warrior Vegeta, which I think is the Namek one, like in his the armor that he wears when he fights Frieza. Yeah. Uh, when he punches Marco, the, the five-year-old. Yeah, the one where he beats the shit out of Gohan, yeah. <laughs> uh, Marco from One Piece. Shun from Saint Seiya. Uh, Mastery of Nanto Seiken Rei, uh, which I guess is like a, a, a version two of him. Usually when they have a title, it's like a version two. Mm-hmm. Um Beast Riding Doshi <laughs> Taikobo <laughs> from uh, Hoshinengi. Uh, the 20% Full Cowl Midoriya from MHA. Kuga Yuma from World Trigger. The Kuzu Ryusen version of Kenshin from Roni Kenshin. The Three Kings Arc Yusuke from Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, Kyubei Yagyu from Gintama. Uh, the Full Bring Bankai version of Ichigo from Bleach. Uh, Nishinoya from Haikyuu, Jonathan Joestar from Phantom Blood, uh, the version 2 of Kanao from Kimetsu no Yaiba, Ukyo from Dr. Stone, uh, Rei from The Promised Neverland, and Isobe Isobi from Monogatari. <laughs> I, be- I believe you mean from Isobe Isobi Monogatari Monogatari? I almost fucking got it. I almost yeah, had it. Yes. Yeah, that. Yeah. So yeah, I was looking at that ticket, and that was a ticket that made me go, "Fuck, I don't know which one of these to pick." I was looking at them pretty good. I think the use case is going to be useful for the returning, um, because it Ryzen's coming back or something. The fight with Ryzen is coming back, and he'll be yes, useful for that. The fight with Ryzen. I've I've never done it, but I hear it's really hard. So uh, yeah, everyone from that we play Ichimpuchi, which was like, oh, this fucking fight's coming back. I hope I can actually beat it. And it's funny because he Ryzen's like a four-star character. No, no. Ryzen? Yeah, I think so. I think he starts as oh, a four. Oh, well, he's, he's a, he starts as a four, but he goes to six. Okay. Um, he, he's not capped. Yeah, he goes to six. Yeah. But it was uh, surprising enough to see him as a four. I was like, what? Well, I guess, okay, he's kind of weak at this point because he's, like, starving himself. The... Yeah, yeah that's... that's, like, that's the Ryzen where he, he dies shortly. At... Spoiler for you, Huck Show. The oh, one God. where he fucking dies. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. And that's... It came out in the fucking 90s. Read it already. <laughs> There's no way for anyone to really spoil Yu Yu Hakusho. Because they won't even know who the fuck Ryzen is and why should they care if he dies or not. Because I remember reading it and going not caring. Yusuke sure as fuck doesn't care. <laughs> so why should you? Yeah, Yusuke doesn't give a shit. He seems kind of pissed at the situation. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, also, did you want to talk about what the freebies do? Because I also have them up, but they're also freebies, so it's not as yeah, exciting. As gotcha yeah, units. I wanted gotcha units we can discuss, but you know, freebies are freebies. You can go to OCHD if you want to know more about them. Um, but you know, they're free. You can just get them. So there's no real reason for you to like debate. It's just fucking get them. That's, that's true. That's true. 
Like, I don't read what the free ones do. I just get them and go, hell yeah, now I have someone in case I need them for a specific thing. And that's perfectly fine. That's what they need to be. Uh, and I guess we can bring up, it is very weird that this entire event seems to be built around ghosts and doing detective work, and there's no new Yu Yu Hakusho. I don't get! I, I mean, everyone, because uh, I have a couple chats and stuff. Yeah. Um, everyone was like, Okay, so they're gonna have to announce like a limited use K, like a dark tournament use K. Yeah. And they're like, nope, Frankenstein Luffy, bitch. <laughs> really just kind of rubbing dirt in the eyes of <laughs> you Haga Show fans. <laughs> Cause there's totally other use cases they could release that would fin- thematically fit with this. Like, not to say that Nightmare Luffy doesn't fit with the idea of uh, demons and ghosts, but he doesn't fit with the detective part of it. Like, the last person you want solving a mystery is fucking Luffy, because he ain't gonna f- solve shit. And to be fair, neither is Yusuke, but at least he can. He has spirit detectives and Botan. So, he can figure it out eventually. Yeah, but and I mean, even if you're just doing, like, demon content, you know what I was actually secretly really hoping hmm. when I heard that it was about, like, evil spirits and demons and stuff? I was like, oh, this is when they're gonna bring in Jujutsu Kaisen, isn't it? And it's not... <sighs> motherfuckers i did i didn't want i wanted to tweet out and go i wanted to make a tweet saying like hmm you know this would be the perfect time you know debut jujitsu bring down a limited of some kind but i was like there's no way they're doing it they're they're saving those fuckers for something big <laughs> that's the only thing in my mind that's yeah like, well no. they're I, I feel like they're almost saving it for like uh oh the we, we don't have a reason to do a celebration quick Jutsu Kaisen release festival. Make us $11 million even when we're not doing anything for an event otherwise. Yeah, bring out whoever. I assume that's the same reason of like... Yeah, it would have made sense for them to maybe finally give out a Chainsaw Man person, but at the same time it's like... I don't think they want to release them right now. Actually, I don't know if Chainsaw Man would fit there. No, whatever. They got fucking Fist of the North Star and Kinshiro fucking explodes dude's head, so Chainsaw Man fits perfectly fine. I was about to say, like, maybe it's too bloody to put into a recent thing and then I completely forgot uh, the 80s. No, they, they'll totally put Chainsaw Man in here at some point, for sure. Yeah, yeah for it's sure. like, Kinshiro blows dude's entire bodies up. Yeah. There, that's the kind of thing of, like, there's a definite period where it's like, all right, this is kind of violent, but, you know, it's still kind of in line with everything. And then you hit the 80s and it's like, oh, my God, even though the the, the manga book about the dogs has fucking dogs dying, horrible deaths every other chapter. Uh-huh. Yeah, there, there's no way they're looking at Chainsaw Man and they're like, what kind of horrible nightmare monstrosity is this? And then they have like jojo where jonathan or uh, jotaro punched dio and his entire half of his body just exploded into a bloody mist <laughs> that's true oh you he know who gets they kicked to death by fucking vanilla ice is wang chun in the game by the way <laughs> just for... uh no no Damn it. no uh part one only has three characters which is surprising it only has jonathan dio and zephali i thought for sure there'd be a speed wagon when i started but there's not one yeah i thought there would be speed wagon too it's actually kind of weird for there not to be speed wagon but maybe they're saving him for later down the line maybe who knows you can never tell with some of the like i said based on us talking about nightmare luffy you can't actually suspect who's coming up next because there's literally so many choices to pick from Yeah, well, that's kind of, on one hand, that's what I like, right? Because you're like, oh, there's so many cool series it could be. But then on the other hand, it's like, oh, it's one piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know what it's going to be, but my heart tells me it's one piece. Uh, but yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good for episode two of Jumpuchi Jams. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, Zen, for once again agreeing to sit down and talk some shit about shonen jump characters literally that's all i ever do on youtube now (laughs) so i'm always happy to do it in another context (laughs) (laughs) and it's always super fun for me even though i have to edit this up and (laughs) get it out there i think of like you have no idea like even as someone who liked one piece how pissed i was when they picked one piece i was like motherfucker i I have to pick an opening that fits with the song and it's so hard to pick it from a popular series (laughs) 
Because <laughs> everything gets you demonetized. Yeah, I... Man. YouTube sucks. Welcome back, everyone. If you've, uh, you've all that got cut, that's gonna come up in a separate video coming out later because it went on way longer than we expected. <laughs> but this is the end of, uh, Chimpuchi Jams. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, you can always leave a like. We, d we complained a whole bunch about YouTube, so you know what? Fucking slap that like button to help out this video. <laughs> Click that like button, like, favorite, subscribe. Yeah, do jump, all that. Jump Pucci right into the like button. Comment, you know, baby in a suitcase getting thrown off a cliff. <laughs> Without baby getting thrown off a cliff, that's all you need to comment. And that will count for something. <laughs> but, but thank you very much for joining us, and until next time. We don't have an ending sign off, so why don't you say goodbye, Zen? Good night, everybody. Good night.